Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer live chat episode. Let me just adjust this camera to make sure that you can see me properly. Hello and welcome. I hope you've all had a really, really lovely day. I have, but you may be like me. Have you been refreshing the Twitter? Have you been refreshing uh, Sarah Ferguson's Instagram in the hope of a Princess Beatrice wedding photo coming up? I am sure you may have been exactly the same as me. So without further ado, I am going to go to the live stream chat window so that I can see who is here and we can chat about the no-show of these wedding photographs. So I do appreciate that um, there is still time in the day for these photographs to appear. Many, many, many of the royal reporters were saying that they expected a photograph, at least one photograph, maybe a series, to be released today. Not yesterday, because it was always believed that, that Princess Beatrice and Eduardo and the York family did not want any wedding news, well, not the news, but any wedding photographs to clash, to coincide, to take away from, to detract from Captain Tom Moore's knighthood. So Captain Tom Moore obviously famously raised uh, over £33 million for National Health Service charities. He was awarded a very special investiture just for him by the Queen, which took place yesterday, the same day as Princess Beatrice's wedding. So, the press, I, I read tweets where they were saying that they expected um, a photograph today. Now, that has not happened. It is what time in the UK right now? It is nine minutes past five in the afternoon. As I said, I have been refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. Um, I've not wanted to do anything in case a photograph came out. And as soon as one does, if one does, I will make a video on that for you. However, at the moment, I cannot bring you it because it is not there. So, what's going on? Are they going to wait until, until later? Has a photograph been embargoed? I really don't know. Perhaps one could be released within the next hour so that it can make um, the six o'clock news here in the UK. Maybe they could release one to make the ten o'clock news. But it just seems a little, little bit strange that one hasn't been released just yet. And... I have a little theory. Now, I do not venture too much into theory, into theory land or theoriesville, but the one thing that I have noticed today is, of course, the press reaction to the secret wedding of Princess Beatrice. Now, I truly, truly, truly do believe that Princess Beatrice and her wedding plans did not leak to the media at all. They did not know. They truly, truly, truly did not know that this wedding was going to take place in advance. There were no leaks. Apparently, it took two weeks to organise. Princess Beatrice, Eduardo and Sarah Ferguson were the ones behind the organisation. Apparently, details have leaked that she may have worn the dress that she always intended to wear, which is apparently from a shop um, that that specialises, well it's, it's an Italian designer so people are thinking thinking that the dress was in a nod to Eduardo's obvious, um, you know, his, his Italian roots. Um, so we think it could be, although not confirmed, we think it could be um, an Italian designer and those gowns can go for up to £20,000 a gown. So we think that she wore the same dress that she was originally going to if you don't know, Princess Beatrice had to put back her wedding because of the coronavirus. It was due to take place just at the start of lockdown. Um, and of course, that didn't happen. So we were all expecting a wedding to take place next year, maybe in the spring. But she took everyone by surprise, including the press. The only reason the press got some paparazzi photographs of the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh and Prince Andrew coming and going is because they were there already for the investiture of Captain Tom Moore. So they were already there on the grounds. So the reaction, what was the press reaction today of that? Well, of course, it was classed as a secret wedding. When, in reality, how they chose to cover the story reflects, I think, their true feelings. I don't think they liked it one bit that they 
did that they were not in the loop about this wedding. Therefore, they have the angle they have looked at this wedding at is, of course, they've uh, gone after um, you know who Eduardo is, what are his family backgrounds, the fact that you know technically by courtesy title he is a count, an Italian count, but that title is not recognised here in the UK. So therefore, uh, Beatrice cannot be known as a countess. Um, but the angle that the, the the majority of the press has gone at is that Princess Beatrice you know, hid herself away, hid her wedding away, made it secret because of the situation with Prince Andrew. Now, I have to say, I think this is really, really unfair on Beatrice because it was already known, it was already well known, it was already talked about that Beatrice did not want the same pomp and circumstance, the same public attention that her sister Eugenie had when she got married to Jack Brooksbank. And that all of this was known because, and I know that it's true, because I spoke about it on this very channel to all of you. You may even remember me saying that, that perhaps, you know, uh, people were talking about Beatrice maybe becoming engaged. And I said, well, the rumours, you know, there, there is already talk that she does not want such a high profile wedding. And that was before everything happened with Prince Andrew. So I do not think that the reason Princess Beatrice kept her wedding secret was because of Andrew. She was already going to get married in a lower key, private, more intimate ceremony and service and reception than what her sister Eugenie had. That was what was already planned. So why do I think that she kept it secret and private now, I think it was simply boils down to the fact that she had waited so long and she'd had quite a few setbacks with this wedding. And I think she just wanted to get married. She didn't particularly care um, that it was stripped back even more. Although, obviously, since the easing of lockdown, there were more people permitted at the wedding than what there would have been if she'd have gone ahead at the start of lockdown. At the start of lockdown, there would only have been five people allowed, and that includes uh, the bride and groom and the vicar. So um, I think they were very, very wise to wait uh, until the easing of lockdown. But, you know, even even so, it was still a very stripped back wedding. We think, we think that, um, that there were maybe around about 20 people there. The reception was very, very brief. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh were the first to leave, obviously, to attend the investiture ceremony. Apparently, everybody was socially distanced. There wasn't any music. There wasn't any singing. It was a very stripped back affair. However, we did actually get to see a glimpse of some of the flowers that were coming in. And um, I actually forgot to pre to preload this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to Instagram and I'm going to, actually I'm, Sarah Ferguson has tweeted in the last, um, in the last 18 minutes. However, it is not, it is not about Princess Beatrice. It's a photograph of a horse that says, uh, what is the best way to be happy, be kind, um, be kind. And that's uh, from the horse. So there we go, from the horse's mouth itself. There we, there we have. Um, but no, the one thing that I wanted to show you, um, other than checking if Sarah Ferguson had updated, was the uh, Windsor Flowers. Uh, let me just see if I can, because uh, I did uh, follow. Ah, here we go. Bear with, bear with, bear with. So, Martin Crossley of the Windsor Florist, uh, because obviously we saw pictures of the flowers being unloaded from the van. He actually shared a photograph of some of the actual flowers that he made for the wedding. So those are Princess Beatrice's, or some of Princess Beatrice's wedding flowers. Do they not look really, really stunning? I love... I love, love, love the pink. Um, I love the roses. I think they are truly, truly stunning. And I'm going to read the message which he put now, which says, uh, Flowers for the Royal Bride, Princess Beatrice of York, after her marriage to Mr. Eduardo Mapelli Mozzi this morning in Windsor Great Park. So those are the some of the actual wedding flowers. So 
Even though we haven't got a picture at the moment, that will give you a little bit of a taste of the interior decor, shall we say. Yes, people are saying they are very pretty, beautiful, lovely, gorgeous flowers. Um, they are. They are really stunning, seasonal, summer flowers. Barbara says, such a sensible theory. Um, yeah, but I haven't finished with my theory. So, why do I think we don't have any wedding photographs at the moment? I think... I actually think it's because the press went at Princess Beatrice's wedding with that angle of that she's put that that, that she's done it all in secret because of of the because of the whole Prince Andrew situation, uh, which is not true. So I think that there could be a case of if we do not get photographs today, it could be a case of trying to give the press a little bit of a slap on the wrist for going at this story with a fake angle. So, what I think we may have on our hands is the press spitting their dummy out of the pram because they were not in the loop, because they didn't know. Therefore, they attacked the York family and Princess Beatrice by going at um, today's press coverage with that particular angle. And now I think we have a bit of a retaliation from Princess Beatrice and the York family because of that angle. So, Maybe they'll make us wait a few more days. I don't know. On saying that, my theory could be completely wrong and we could get photographs imminently. Um, but anyway, that's just kind of what I'm thinking at the moment it could be. Um, people missing the fan flaps. I, I may bring them out of retirement, but I am wearing uh, the York family tiara. So this is a replica of the tiara that was made for Sarah for her wedding. Uh, when she married Prince Andrew and became the Duchess of York. So there we have uh, my York family, my replica York family tiara. Let's just pop that back on right about there. Um, yes, I've just showed you the tiara. Um, Summer Wind says, let's be real, it's all because of Andy, low-key at this time. No, it's it definitely not. Beatrice always planned a lower key wedding than Princess Eugenie. I was speaking about this on this very channel before everything happened with Andrew. So so no, I'm, I'm not accepting it. I'm not buying it. It is not because of that. She was going to go ahead with the wedding, even with the present situation with Prince Andrew, as it stood um, before lockdown. The only reason she has done this in secret is because I think she's literally had enough. She's fed up of waiting and she's like, well, I just want to get married. Um, and I honestly think that is the only reason why. Is it convenient for Prince Andrew? Yes, most definitely, 100%. It is convenient for him. Um, but other than that, it is down to Beatrice. Beatrice could have waited until, um, until April. She could have gone ahead with this sort of low-key wedding at the start of lockdown, uh, but she didn't. Uh, she chose to just do it privately, quietly, no fuss, no pomp, no circumstance. It was just, I believe, to her about getting married. And that is literally, I think, all there is to it. Uh, Maria says, hello. Congratulations to the newlyweds. Yes, indeed. And I wish them too all the very best uh, of luck for their future. Uh, Kaneta says, Her Majesty looked beautiful in any colour dress. Talking about style, it is Her Majesty for sure. Yes, most definitely. El Hodge says, Very classy on her part, I'd say. Totally, 100%. Now, a little bit of news um, about the investiture with Captain Tom Moore, who is now Sir Thomas Moore, Sir, Sir Captain Sir Thomas Moore. He has actually said that he still wants to be referred to as Captain Tom, but... I think, you know, we should be calling him Sir because it is a great, great honour. Now, the Queen actually offered him some and his family to come back to Windsor Castle and have tea with her, tea and scones and uh, a high tea. But Captain Tom had to decline because he'd already booked and made plans with his family to go to uh, the Castle Hotel in Windsor. And I can actually show you a photograph of Captain Tom Moore uh, having a having a cream tea. Doesn't he look lovely? He, he looks so well turned out. Um, I think that was a really amazing happy day. And just look at that cream tea. That cream tea is to die for. 
Um, I think it's really, really outstanding. And you can see his uniform on display in the background. And here we have his family sat down enjoying that beautiful cream tea which I think, again, is really, really lovely. So that is the reason why he turned down uh, tea, because obviously now you have to book things. The family had obviously booked booked this, this nice um, lunch, um, and obviously the Queen hadn't pre-asked him and his family to come back for afternoon tea. Usually you would not refuse the Queen anything. If the Queen asked you to come to tea, you would say, yes, <laughs> most definitely. But obviously he had made plans so he couldn't do it. I think maybe the Queen could invite him somewhere separately. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he got invited to Balmoral for the summer? That would be really, really cool, I think. Um, and very, very nice for the Queen as well. And, and Philip as well, because obviously they're similar in age. Uh, Louisa says, lovely to hear the Queen telling Captain Sir Tom and his family that her granddaughter just got married and loved the way she turned around to say goodbye with a little wave, a real wave. Yes, totally, absolutely agree. El Hodge says, I would have chosen tea with the Queen. Um, I know, I would as well. Uh, but I think when, you, when you're talking about that generation, um, you know, don't forget, he's, he's 100 years old. If you've already made a plan and made a commitment, you stick to, to that plan and the commitment. My granddad uh, was exactly the same. He, he died at 94 um, about four years ago. And he, he probably, I could imagine him doing the same thing, saying, oh, well, I've already made plans, so I can't. So I, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's to do with ge generational values, shall we say. Um, Kinetta says, with Prince Philip advancing in age, I don't blame Beatrice for having a quiet ceremony while her granddad is still living. Wait too much longer. Yeah, you, 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 you take that risk, don't you? Uh, PN says, would the Queen invite uh, Captain Tom to be a guest at Beanedo's wedding tea? Um, I don't think they were having one. They weren't having one. Um, as far as I've heard at the moment, the details came out that it was very low key. The reception was socially distanced. It was outside in the garden of Royal Lodge. There was no music. There was no singing. There was no dancing. Um, all in line with government recommendations, current government recommendations for weddings. So I don't think there was one. Um, so there we go. Hey, Tim the King says, doubt he would enjoy the long journey from Aberdeen to Crafty Biker. Oh, send in the helicopter. Airlift him in. Definitely. I'm sure they could make an exception for Captain Tom. I'm sure people wouldn't mind a helicopter ride for Captain Tom up to Balmoral for a few weeks in the summer. Come on, people. Um, I, think, I, I think that would be acceptable. He's a hero. He's a hero. Um... Rebecca says, this is my favourite royal wedding for of the recents. Personal, very close family occasion. And I, I love that chapel as well. Some people are saying, oh, you know, it's not very flashy and, uh, you know, it's not very grand. It's beautiful. It was a beautiful, beautiful chapel. The chapel of all saints at Royal Lodge. It was incredible. Um, very personal, very private. I still want to see the dress. I am still dying to see the dress. But, hey... I can wait. I can most definitely wait. Right, I'm just going to uh, go back to the Royal Family Twitter page just to see if anything has come up whilst I'm live. Uh, no, there there is not at the moment anything coming up. And yesterday as well, obviously, Camilla's 73rd birthday. So there was a lot going on yesterday. Um, not terribly too much today. Like I say, we, we, we're waiting on the photographs. I think it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game with the press, a little bit of a reaction to um, to the coverage, to the angle of the coverage that the press have gone at today. So how long will they keep us waiting for? I do not know. Will it be released for the six o'clock news? Will it be released for the 10 o'clock news? Maybe, possible. At the moment, we do not know. Um, and that is, do I have photos inside the chapel? I showed one yesterday. If I can remember where where I had it, um, I will show it you again. It's not not inside from Beatrice's wedding, but I do have an inside shot of a wedding, not Beatrice's wedding. So this is a wedding inside the chapel. 
Um, so that's what it looks like. It's gorgeous. It is not, um, it's, I mean, she, 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 she has not scrimped, let's put it that way, by going for that option. It's gorgeous. And it is, of course, the chapel that the Queen worships at normally on a weekly basis whilst she is at Windsor. So, um, okay, it's not as grand as St George's Chapel. It's not, uh, you know, it's not St Paul's. It's not uh, Westminster Abbey. But it's beautiful. It's got beautiful carvings and stone and the beams and the stained glass window. It has royal associations. It's close to home. Um, I think it's really lovely. So, um, so yeah, it, it's just really stunning and beautiful. Reverend Darlene says, wow, the chapel is beautiful. It is indeed. And I'm hoping you could see from how I was showing you on the screen. Kelly says, yesterday was my parents' 55th anniversary. Congratulations. Um, Barbie says, this sweet and private wedding feels much more romantic than others. I love it. Uh, yeah, and I, I've got a feeling she might have worn the York tiara. I really, really do. Um, yeah, it is a truly stunning and gorgeous chapel. By the way, we have 161 people in today. Um, so if you are watching and you've enjoyed this little update, please give a big old thumbs up. Now, of course, I will be back if we do have any further details. If Buckingham Palace do drop this photograph, I will make a video on it um, and I will do a voiceover and I will show you that photograph. If we get a whole load of details, then I will come on and do a further live chat. So it's really, really important that you are subscribed to the channel and that you have hit the notification bell. Again, thank you so, so much to all of the channel members on YouTube. Someone asked me yesterday what a channel member is. Um, it means that you can use custom emojis in the chat room that other people can't. So if I just, I'm just going to post some of them now, uh, some of the royal family. Um, there we go. So th those are just some of the custom emojis that you can use. Uh, also, it means that you are supporting the channel beyond watching the videos. Um, and also thank you so, so much to the patrons on, pa on Patreon who have been really amazing. Hey, Tim the King says, if a photo does come, it won't be via official lines, probably their personal Instagram or Twitter. I don't know. I mean, like I say, they did share photographs of Princess Eugenie's wedding on the Royal Family Twitter account. So it's possible that one may come. Also, it's possible that they, that they may have um, chosen to directly release it to the media um, via, you know, some kind of royal photographic pool. Also, as you said, they could choose to do it on Sarah's Instagram. So I have been watching all of these different um, outlets that it could possibly be put out there under. Um, Carolyn says, am I going to discuss Princess Anne's 79th anniversary interviews? Yes, there are two. Um, and I plan to do that in the week because we've had a lot going on this weekend. And I want this to be about Princess Beatrice. Hey, the King says, maybe Fergie might release something on today's episode of Fergie and Friends. I don't think so. I, I know. I, I know you're kind of laughing at it, but I, I, I kind of don't think so. Uh, Lauren says, hi, Elliot. Sorry, I'm late to the video. You are more than welcome. Right, I am going to go now. Like I say, if anything crops up, I will be back in some form to cover it. So if you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. Also, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. So from me in Shropshire, to you all and goodbye.